Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief over at theserverside.com. You can follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ. And I want to talk to you about UiPath, UiPath Studio, and Outlook, and specifically how to connect to Outlook and how to go through all of your email messages in your local Outlook installation. So in this project, I'd like to show you how to connect to Outlook. So I'm just going to create a new blank process, and I'm going to call it Connect to Outlook. And I'm going to do more than just connect Outlook. I'm actually going to print out the subject for all of the different messages in my Outlook inbox. And you can see my Outlook inbox right here. Got a couple of different messages. Did you use the UiPath variable example? Did you do the Hello World UiPath example? Did you set up UiPath? Just a couple of emails that I sent myself. But I'm going to get UiPath to connect to this Outlook account on my local machine and print out all of those subjects. So it'll be a nice little example of, of how to use Outlook inside of UiPath. So with the project created, I'm going to open the main window. And of course, the action that I want to do is the activity I want to do is to connect to mail and specifically to Outlook. I want to get my Outlook mail messages. So I just drop that into the activity here. Take a look at the Outlook mail messages, get mail messages, and what do we have? Uh, it's going to go to the inbox folder, and that makes sense because everything's inside of my inbox. I'm not going to apply a filter. Uh, only unread messages, that's fine for now. Um, I'm going to deselect that, actually, um, although it's not really going to make a big difference. And then the key is, what are we going to store all of those messages as inside of the application? So you need a variable to hold all of this data. Now, the Email messages are of data type mail message, but you're going to have a bunch of them, a collection of them, a set of them, a list of them. So the actual object type becomes actually a list. So here's how you set it up. You go into variables and you create a variable called email messages. That makes sense. Now the variable type, you're going to have to browse for the type because the type is going to be of type list and there's a million different lists here. But what it is, it's the generic list T from system. So system.collections.generic list T. So we're going to have a list. Now the other thing is, what's going to be in the list? And you have to specify here again, browse for types. Boy, we're into a, a mirror of mirrors here. But what we want is the mail message. Now this is not supposed to be discriminatory against female messages. This is a different type of mail. But we now have a list of mail messages as our data type. So a bunch of mail messages are going to be held in that variable email messages. And it's going to be within the scope of this sequence. So okay, that all looks good. I have to specify up here that that is the data type that we're going to be holding that variable as. And, uh, email messages, there's the variable there. Okay, everything looks fantastic now. So this should just connect to Outlook and grab all of my messages in Outlook and then store them in this variable. Now, if you've got a big Outlook folder, you might want to apply some sort of a filter there, um, but I've only got three, so this isn't going to be too resource intensive. Now, this just does the connection. What you want to do is you actually want to do some work after you've connected to the email messages, so you want to add some type of a workflow. And in this case, I'm going to add a... Um, uh, control flow and go through each of the different emails inside of that email mail messages list there. So I'm going to add the for each workflow control and I'm going to change this for each item. That's fine, but I'll say for each email in email messages. I think that reads really well. And remember, email messages is our variable here. And what do I want to do? Well, I guess what I'll do is I'm just going to output the subject. So you can see the subject. Did you use? Did you do the hello world? I'm just going to print out that subject and that's going to prove that everything is working here. So I go into system and there is this message box dialog. I'm going to drop, drop it on here and I'm going to say email dot and then what is the property? I think it's email dot subject and then should I do dot two string? in there. I think that's always good to do a two string when you have that. And now I'm going to run this application. So I'll click run. Oh, let me just make sure that I got everything. Okay, the output. I don't need the output. I got the values. Oh, look at this. I almost forgot this. So we're going through the email messages, but you have to do the type argument. And the type argument is system.net.mail.mailmessage. Otherwise, these method calls, it doesn't understand. It'd be like, I don't know what email.subject.toString is because you've just done a generic 
a generic object there. So here I've actually added in again, that's a system dot not dot net dot mail dot mail message and again no discrimination against female messages here okay i almost forgot to do that and you'll forget to do it as well so i'm glad i demonstrated that now i can click run and notice the message box is now coming up and it's connecting to my local installation of outlook and you can see did you use ui path variables with input that maps to that subject in that email message did you do the hello world ui path did you set up UiPath Studio? And you see this is mapping to the messages of all of my emails. And so that proves out the ability to now connect to Outlook and then loop through all those email messages. Here I'm just pulling at the subject. That's sort of a proof of concept, but then you can start adding some more programming and control flow it to take a look at what's inside of the content of the email and maybe even download attachments and process PDF files. And there you go, that's how easy it is to connect to Outlook using UiPath Studio. Anyways, if you enjoyed this tutorial, why don't you head over to theserverside.com. We've got lots of other great tutorials on enterprise software development and all of the things that have to do with DevOps and automation. If you want to follow my personal antics, you can always follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ and subscribe on YouTube.